Israel. An ancient land of endless ruins which all have stories to tell. Of the many treasures to be found among Israel's rich historical remains is a tomb that was unearthed in 1980 in Talpiot, east of Jerusalem. Inside, an ossuary was uncovered which read, Jesus, son of Joseph. Yet the tomb was considered an insignificant find for 27 years, until the emergence of a film that put forth an exciting yet controversial theory. Because the tomb contained ossuaries that bore inscriptions closely resembling the Holy Family of the New Testament, this new film suggests that the Talpia tomb is the lost tomb of Jesus. From approximately 20 BCE until the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 CE, the Jewish people observed a unique religious burial practice that was connected to their belief in physical resurrection. When a family member died, the body of the deceased was left in the family tomb to decay for a minimum of one year. A year later, when the flesh of the deceased had fully decayed, the family would return to the tomb to gather the bones of their loved one. Yet another day of mourning would occur as the bones were placed in a stone box called an ossuary. Sometimes the name of the individual was carved on the side of the ossuary for identification purposes. The lid was firmly placed on the ossuary and it was stored away in the tomb to await a complete resurrection. There's a tremendous amount of expansion around Jerusalem. They were constantly coming into uh, archaeological remains. The most significant remains uh, were normally tombs. It all starts on uh, the Thursday, the 27th of uh, April, 1980. Uh, they're building this new neighborhood. Uh, it's, a, it's connecting on to uh, an original part of the neighborhood which had been built um, five or six years beforehand. Dr. Shimon Gibson, one of Israel's leading archaeologists was one of the few people to enter the Talpia tomb after its discovery. His job was to survey and record the dimensions of the Talpia tomb. It was a Saturday evening. I get a call from uh, Dr. Amos Kloner. He was a district archaeologist uh, at the time for the Jerusalem region. And he said, hey, Shimon, uh, a tomb has been discovered. It's being excavated by uh, Yosuke Gat. Go out and help record this interesting tomb. I participated in the excavation. We recorded the tomb. Uh, there were workers there who were clearing out the soil within the cave, which indicated to me straight away that this cave had been opened in antiquity. Otherwise, you wouldn't have an accumulation of soil within the cave itself. It was quite shallow in the, the kochim, in these loculi, which extended off like tunnels and in different directions from the main chamber walls. There, uh, one, one could have seen those osheries on the day of the discovery, and hence they were taken out first. The first thing they did was to dig out these uh, osheries, bag them, uh, put them into boxes, and then to convey them to the Rockefeller Museum. At the time of its discovery, the Talpia tomb was considered to be just one more of the many tombs that have been unearthed in the Jerusalem area. There seemed to be nothing out of the ordinary about it. According to archaeologists, it was not a significant tomb at all. However, 27 years after its discovery, the Talpia tomb finally gained public attention with the release of the film, The Lost Tomb of Jesus. This film claimed to have found proof that this is the tomb and final resting place of the body of Jesus Christ and his family. What are the claims that were made in order to prove this controversial theory? Claim number one. Inscriptions found in the Talpia tomb seem to match the names we might expect to find in a tomb belonging to Jesus and his family. The most interesting of the names being Jesus, son of Joseph. 
Claim number two. Mary Magdalene and Jesus may have been married with a son, which explains why her ossuary might be in the tomb along with an ossuary reading, Judah, son of Jesus. The Lost Tomb of Jesus film claims that DNA testing could support this. Claim number three. The gable on the Talpia tomb could be an early Christian symbol linked to the tomb of the Apostle Peter. Claim number four. The infamous James ossuary may in fact be the missing ossuary from the Talpia tomb. Because James was the brother of Jesus, they claim this further proves that the Talpia tomb contains the Holy Family. If Jesus in fact was not raised, then Christian faith is misguided. It would have to be seriously modified, perhaps abandoned altogether. The Lost Tomb of Jesus film has caused a firestorm of controversy between the world's leading scholars. Have the bones of Jesus been unearthed? We decided to look into the claims of the Lost Tomb film and interview many of the same experts. Dr. James Tabor believes the Talpia tomb could be the tomb of Jesus of Nazareth. I would argue that it's uh, likely, uh, from possibly to likely. Of course, one thing, obviously, it, it, ha it has an ossuary with Jesus, son of Joseph, or we wouldn't even be discussing. So the real question is, uh, what Jesus, and can we associate other things in the tomb with this particular uh, cluster of names? However, Dr. Craig Evans is one of the many who strongly oppose the theory of the lost tomb of Jesus film. Not based on theology or religious convictions, but based on serious, hard-headed scholarship, I conclude that it is highly improbable that the East Talpiot tomb was the tomb of Jesus and his family. The custom of preserving the bones of an individual in an ossuary was common in the time and setting of Jesus of Nazareth. But what would finding an ossuary that contained his bones mean for Christianity? I think it'd be devastating for Christianity. Uh, one of the main beliefs is that Jesus rose from the dead in bodily form. And uh, the account of Luke and Acts, the very first chapter, is uh, a view of the disciples looking up at the sky because they just finished watching uh, the resurrected Jesus, his body, ascend into heaven. Today, scholars debate whether the resurrection of Christ was spiritual or physical. In the early generation, they're not looking for an empty tomb with a corpse now become alive, walking around to prove he's alive. They might be talking more about the spirit of Jesus that they're experiencing. Dr. James Tabor is one of the few scholars in support of the theory that the Talpia tomb may be the lost tomb of Jesus. He argues that it is possible that the resurrection referred to in the Gospels could simply be spiritual. Some Jews might believe very literally in resurrection. Literally, I'm standing in a graveyard and there's hundreds of tombs. And one day, like a Michael Jackson video, you know, they're all going to pop open and these corpses in various stages of decay or totally decayed are going to come up, you know, sort of can these bones live idea. But I think others could have a more, I would say, sophisticated view or even scientific view. I find the suggestion that uh, Jesus wasn't really physically resurrected, but instead he appeared to his disciples uh, as a ghost or a phantom or a vision or something like that. I find that unconvincing. Dr. Craig Evans, respected author and biblical scholar, does not support the idea that the Talpia tomb belonged to the family of Jesus. He also feels that in the first century, those who witnessed the resurrection were convinced it was a physical resurrection. The Jewish people had plenty of traditions that could accommodate ghost stories. And so if Jesus was just a spirit that occasionally appeared to somebody and left a comforting thought or word with, with them, then I think that's exactly what uh, his followers would have believed. If the bones of Jesus of Nazareth were suddenly unearthed, the faith of professing Christians around the world would be shaken to its very foundation. The gospel accounts of an empty tomb would be proven false. The disciples who were willing to lay down their lives as witnesses to a resurrection would have died in vain. The Apostle Paul's confidence in the powerful resurrection of Christ would have been misplaced. Those witnesses of the death 
resurrection and ascension of Jesus would have had no miraculous or good news to spread. If the bones of Jesus were discovered, surely Christianity and all that it has stood for and still stands for would be buried, never to be resurrected. Let me see what she says and I'll call you right back. Oh, okay. Well, let's see what happens here. The one thing about Israel, filming in Israel, it's ever changing. June of 2007, our Unearthed team set out to Israel to take a closer look at the evidence that has led some scholars to believe that the Talpia tomb contained the bones of Jesus of Nazareth and his family. Our journey of inquiry begins at the Talpia tomb that was unearthed in 1980. Today the tomb is covered by a cement box and sealed from further investigation. Doing well, thanks for coming out and joining us here at um, Talpiot. At the box. Epigrapher Dr. Fawn, one of the editors of the Dead Sea Scrolls, has been an outspoken critic of the way the evidence has been handled. What we have in, in front of us is a box that had to be created over an original Second Temple period tomb wow. mm -hmm. uh, that was found in the midst of a neighborhood in the outskirts of Jerusalem that uh, they just couldn't leave open like that. All we can do is talk about the really interesting set of ossuaries that okay. were found inside. Let's take a closer look at all the ossuaries that were found in the Talpia tomb. In the Talpia tomb, 10 ossuaries were discovered. Of the 10, six bore inscriptions. The inscriptions are Maria, thought by some to be a rare version of the name Mary, connected to the mother of Jesus. Yeshua bar Yosef, Jesus son of Joseph. The lost tomb of Jesus film suggests that this could be the Jesus of the New Testament. Yosa, a short form of the name Joseph and the version used to refer to the brother of Jesus in our oldest source, the Gospel of Mark. Mattia, Matthew. Although there is no Matthew recorded in the immediate family of Jesus, the film claims that finding this name is not completely unexpected, being that there are many Matthews in Mary's genealogy. Yehuda bar Yeshua, Judah, son of Jesus, indicating that Jesus was married and had a son. Maryam ne Kaimara. The lost tomb of Jesus suggests that this could be Mary Magdalene. There is a debate between scholars as to whether or not the cluster of names found in the Talpia tomb is unique. Look, there is a cave in Jerusalem where you've got Joseph, the, Jesus, the son of Joseph, and you've got Mary, and you've got Matthew, and you've got everybody there, the whole holy family. Dr. Dan Bahat is the former chief archaeologist of the city of Jerusalem. He is a highly respected figure in the archaeological world. We met Dr. Bahat near the ruins of the Jewish temple. He has been familiar with the ossuaries from the Talpia tomb since their discovery. Most of the names which are there are very, very common names. Jesus is very common, Joseph is common, Judah is common. So I won't be surprised that all the occurrences occur together. They don't really go for the argument that, uh, you know, the names are common, therefore it uh, means nothing. You know, the names aren't that common, as uh, people imply. Uh, the names that were found in the Talpia tomb are common, very common Jewish names. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the names Mariame and Maria are among the most common names for women, perhaps as many as 25% of all Jewish women in this time were given those names. We decide to find out just how common these names are. A visit to the Israel Antiquities Authority reveals interesting evidence as the Unearth team investigates the hundreds of ossuaries in their collection. In April 1980, a tomb was discovered near Jerusalem containing 10 ossuaries. Six of the ossuaries were inscribed with the names of the deceased. Many of the names bore a striking resemblance to the Holy Family of the New Testament. The most interesting and controversial of these ossuaries read, Jesus, son of Joseph. 
But does this cluster of names prove that this is the tomb of Jesus of Nazareth and his family? Do these names prove anything? We decide to pay a visit to the Israel Antiquities Authority warehouse. Accompanied by Dr. Stephen Fawn and forensic archaeologist Stephen Cox, our unearthed team wants to see if the names found in the Talpia tomb are different from the names found on other ossuaries in the IAA's collection. Maria Shimon. It's, it's the one of the ones that they said that how Maria is not, uh, is a rare name. Here's another Maria, see, just right in front of us. The first thing we discover once inside the IAA is the name Maria, clearly engraved on an ossuary. Here's another Maria over here. But here is another Maria. Another Maria. M-A-R-I-A, -A, Maria. We easily find many Marias as we explore the seemingly endless shells of ossuaries in the IAA. We have so many Marys here. In fact, here we have uh, Ima Mariam, Mother Mary. It's where you have Simon. This one's very clear, actually, in Latin letters in this case. And then you have, uh, in the same tomb, uh, another Mary, Mariame, just like the one on our ashore in the Talpio tomb. This is the most common way that Mary is spelt in Greek. Taking a look at the IAA catalog, we discover that of the 231 inscribed ossuaries, 10 of them bear the name Maria, and approximately 10 of them read Mariam, yet another rendering of the name Mary. Maria was one of the most common names in the first century. But what does this prove? When the Maria ossuary is placed together with the other names in the Talpia tomb, we seem to have a perfect family tree from the New Testament family. A very striking cluster of names. We now turn our attention to the name Yose. Is it like Maria, also a common name? That name Yose or Yosa, it ends with the letter He, is very rare. Dr. Tabor is one of the few scholars who consider the presence of the name Yose in the Talpia tomb to be evidence that the tomb belonged to the Holy Family. It's only once on any ossuary out of the hundreds of ossuaries that are inscribed. Uh, that name never occurs anywhere but this tomb. However, a majority of scholars are of a different opinion. The uniqueness of, of Yose, the uniqueness of Maria is actually not unique at all. We find these all over the place, both in Greek and Hebrew, in the ossuaries that we have in and around Jerusalem. Now, these names are in fact common. I know of at least two dozen examples of Yose. So that's not uh, a rare form of the name. In fact, looking at the IAA catalog alone, we find variations of the name Joseph, including the nickname Yose, 19 times. It is one of the most common names found on ossuaries from this period. Yosei on its own does not appear to be enough solid evidence linking the Talpia tomb to Jesus of Nazareth. But what about the combination of names? The lost tomb of Jesus theory claims that when applying statistics to this group of names, the probability that this is not the tomb of the Jesus of the Bible is 1 in 600. The so-called odds of 600 to 1 in favor of identifying the East Talpia tomb as the tomb of Jesus' family uh, don't impress me because uh, the calculations are based on a series of erroneous identifications. And so I claim no expertise in statistics whatsoever. But in my view, statistics have no validity if they're based on mistakes. We traveled to Tel Aviv University to speak with an expert on statistics. I really think that it is not unreasonable that this is the tomb site of the New Testament family. I really think that that is a possibility and it is a very exciting possibility. Professor Camille Fuchs is a statistician who has carefully reviewed the computations that have been done regarding the hypothetical tomb of Jesus. 
The only things that I want to, to mention is that the computations that have been made and the claim that the chances of this not being the tomb site is 1 in 600 gives me big concern. The lost tomb of Jesus claims that when applying statistics to this cluster of names, the chances are only 1 in 600 that the Talpia tomb is not the tomb of Jesus. However, many experts, including Professor Fuchs, have questioned the information and the method used to arrive at this number. One of the many concerns has been how much this computation relies on the Mariame ossuary being the ossuary of Mary Magdalene. To the filmmakers, her presence in the tomb could explain the presence of the ossuary which reads, Judah, son of Jesus. Is it possible that Jesus was married to Mary Magdalene? Was Judah their son? This is a modern fiction. This is it, what it is in, in a word. It's poppycock. It is not based on any historical evidence. I would never think it's Mary Magdalene. I, I would just think uh, maybe it's just another Mary, not the sister, not the mother. It's a common name. Maybe even if it's Jesus' tomb, could have had the wife of one of his brothers could be a Mary. I mean, how would we know? Except there's a son in the tomb who's the son of Jesus. So I'm expecting a mother to be in that tomb who won't be related to him as sister or mother. Mary Magdalene, was she closer to Jesus than the canonical gospels record? Recent theories have surfaced in large part because of films such as The Da Vinci Code and The Lost Tomb of Jesus. Is there any truth in these films? What do we really know about this mysterious woman from 2,000 years ago? The Talpia tomb, discovered just outside of Jerusalem, revealed some amazing finds. An ossuary with the inscription, Jesus, son of Joseph, caught the world's attention. But even more surprising was the bone box that read, Judah, son of Jesus. If this was the tomb of the Jesus from the Bible, could this be his son? Would this mean that he was married? And if so, to whom? Recent theories have emerged suggesting that Jesus was secretly married to the woman known as Mary Magdalene. But who was Mary Magdalene? And why was she so important? Well, Mary Magdalene was, uh, I think, a very interesting character to be remembered by name and to have such prominence in, in the story of Jesus. And I think it's because Jesus was open to having women hear his teaching. Jesus, in a way, you might say, was the first feminist. And so he allowed women to sit at his feet and hear his teaching. Mary also was a witness to the discovery of the empty tomb and saw the risen Jesus. And so her name therefore figures prominently in early church history. However, there's not a shred of historical evidence of any kind that Mary Magdalene was married to a particular person, be that Jesus or someone else. Our curiosity about Mary Magdalene takes us to her ancient hometown, Migdal where we hope to learn a little more about her. Since its original excavations over 30 years ago, the Unearthed team is one of the very few that have been given permission to film at that location. Archaeologist Father Stefano De Luca meets us here to help answer some of our questions. Al tempo di Gesù Magdala era una delle più importanti città della costa occidentale del lago. Da Giuseppe Flavio sappiamo che mm, la città di Magdala che a suo dire contava 40.000 abitanti, era dotata di un porto, di un grande porto, probabilmente questa torre dei pesci doveva essere il faro. Le informazioni storiche che possediamo su Maria di Magdala sono davvero molto poche. Definitivamente non possiamo uh, argomentare dalle informazioni che abbiamo che Maria di Magdala fosse sposata o fidanzata in nessun modo con Gesù di Nazareth o con nessun altro del gruppo apostolico. As far as Mary Amne possibly being uh, married to Jesus and the mother of this child that's in the tomb, taking the tomb as a start uh, for asking that question, I don't know of any written record that puts Jesus married to, to Mary Magdalene with a child. With no historical evidence that Jesus was ever married to anyone, 
the filmmakers of The Lost Tomb of Jesus attempted to prove their theory with the use of DNA testing on the ossuaries they believed to belong to Jesus and Mary Magdalene. That DNA was done and it, they're not matched uh, maternally, meaning they're not brother, sister, or she's not his mother, uh, or, or related to him in that way. But what it told you then is of the three intimate Marys in Jesus' life, that one is not the mother or the sister. This means that this Mary should not belong in the family tomb of Jesus unless she was married to someone in it. The Lost Tomb of Jesus film concludes that because the DNA samples from the supposed Jesus and Mary Magdalene ossuaries prove that they did not have the same mother, it is possible that they were husband and wife. This DNA test proved to be one of the most controversial points of the entire film. There's enough DNA information in a single hair to get information that we can actually match from one individual to another. Stephen Cox is a professor at the University of the Holy Land in Israel. He is a forensic archaeologist and an expert in his field, having worked for many years in crime scene investigation for law enforcement and the U.S. military. He takes us back to the IAA to tell us a bit more of what testing was done on the Talbiot ossuaries and what that could or could not have proven. We know by studying ossuaries and the burial practices of this time, mm -hmm. multiple people were put into these boxes. Okay. Stephen Cox is familiar with the scientific techniques that were used. He feels that the integrity of the scientific world has been compromised in order to promote this far-fetched notion. Well, there is not enough evidence to make any kind of assumption that this bone box contained the bones of a man named Jesus of Nazareth. What facts do we know? Well, we've got a stone box. It's of a period of time. We've got an inscription on here that says, Jesus, Bar Yosef. And then there's questions with that. Can we even say that the bones that were recovered from this box is the person that was originally put into this box? No. Can we say that the bones in here were even animal or human? The testing was not done for that. There could have been multiple people, could have been male or female, it could have been animal or human, it could have been mixed animal and human. So based on all of that, there is no way that anybody could actually come and say that the material that was recovered here, biological material, the bones that were recovered from here, is the person that's on this. And then to make the jump that this name and this material in here is the one and only Jesus of Nazareth is a huge jump in logic. Huge jump in logic. Can't be done. In fact, although only 10 ossuaries were found in the Talpia tomb, it has been verified that the tomb contained the skeletons of approximately 35 different individuals. As many as four different generations could have had their DNA in any of the 10 ossuaries. This makes it impossible to know for certain who the DNA belonged to. Adding to the controversy, Stephen Cox appeared in the film The Lost Tomb of Jesus and was portrayed collecting the DNA samples for testing. He feels he was misrepresented. I was upset with it with my portrayal in the documentary, speaking specifically there, in the fact that I was asked to come in and view the material in these ossuaries, and only two of the many ossuaries that we see sitting here really had material that was recoverable. Uh, there was material in the uh, James, this uh, so-called Jesus ossuary, excuse me. There was material in this so-called Mary Amne ossuary, and I did recover it, and I preserved it for future testing, but I did not send it to the DNA lab in, in uh, Canada. The Mary Amne ossuary becomes even more controversial as we look at the inscription. What does it really say? The film The Lost Tomb of Jesus gained public attention with its suggestion that a tomb near Jerusalem may have belonged to Jesus of Nazareth and his family. Yet some of the most controversial material in this film had to do with an ossuary that some believe belongs to the biblical character Mary Magdalene. Suggestions that Jesus and Mary Magdalene were married and had a son have outraged many Christians. DNA testing that attempted to prove this theory has drawn severe criticism from many in the scientific community. But what makes the filmmakers believe that this ossuary belonged to Mary Magdalene in the first place? 
The name is very curious. Mariamne is used in some later 2nd, 3rd, 4th century texts for Mary Magdalene, as opposed to uh, Maria, which is the other form. Dr. Tabor believes the inscription reads, Mariamne Chimara, meaning Mary the Master or Lady. Could this be Mary Magdalene? First of all, you have to accept that the Mariamne there is indeed uh, uh, Ma Ma Mary Magdalene. But first, you've got to sort of accept that this is Mariamne and not Mariam. Uh, um, there, there are alternative uh, uh, views as to the reading of that inscription. Our curiosity takes us to a cold biblique to meet another experienced epigrapher. We asked Dr. Emil Puesh to read the inscription on the ossuary, which some believe contained the bones of Mary Magdalene. All set up over here. Yeah. As an epigrapher, what what do you see? What do you what do you think this is here? What I see is an inscription in Greek, in cursive Greek, mm -hmm. by uh, on a soft chalk, uh, the, the stone. Not very well done, but normal in the in that period. Uh, you have two names: Maria Me, Kai, Mara. How sure are you? Are you 10% sure that's two names? 100% sure. Dr. Puesh is convinced that there are two names on this ossuary, Maria May and Mara. Maria May being a very common form of the name Mary. And if Maria May is surely feminine, if Mara is masculine, is wife and husband. He also tells us that Mara could be either a man or a woman meaning if this form of Mara is masculine, then this Mariame is most likely buried with her husband. This reading of the inscription appears to leave little hope that this is the ossuary of the famed Mary Magdalene. The Lost Tomb of Jesus film also presents a conspiracy type theory. Of the 10 ossuaries recorded during the tomb's excavation, only nine have been located in the possession of the IAA. What happened to the 10th missing ossuary. There are suggestions which have been made that the James ossuary might have come from um, this tomb. I doubt it. The James ossuary is another mystery. This ossuary appeared on the archaeology scene a few years ago with the inscription, James, son of Joseph, brother of Jesus. Since its initial appearance, it has caused much speculation as to its own authenticity. Yet the Lost Tomb of Jesus film claims that this could be the missing ossuary from the Talpia tomb. Adding this inscription to the others of the Talpia tomb appears to increase the odds that this is the family tomb of Jesus. The tool that was used here to try and bring the James ossuary into this cluster of ossuaries was the use of patina. Stephen Cox explains that the way the patina was collected from the James ossuary could not have been helpful in this investigation. They believed that if we could take patina from the James ossuary and match it to the patina from here, and it was a match, they came from the same tomb. Well, there's a lot of problems with that scientifically. One, a patina does not have that kind of fingerprint quality to give us unique comparisons to be able to say that it came from that environment to the exclusion of all other environments. In addition to this, the missing ossuary was reported unimportant and uninscribed, according to those who were carefully documenting the Talpia tomb excavations. I believe that the James ossuary most certainly is not from the Talpia tomb. Why? Because it was discovered and in circulation years before the Talpia tomb was discovered in 1980. There is a photograph dated to 1976 of the James ossuary, which is confirmed by an FBI lab analysis, but also because further analysis of the James ossuary by geochemists indicate that the James ossuary actually had been in circulation, exposed to sunlight, outside of a cave environment for perhaps a hundred years or longer. The Talpia tomb appears to be shrouded with mysteries and riddles. One of the more obvious and visible one is the strange symbol that appears over the door. This chevron and circle appear to represent something, but what? The Lost Tomb of Jesus film has an incredible theory. Could this be an ancient Christian symbol? 
While investigating this, the filmmakers stumble across a first century tomb at Dominus Flevit. Traditionally, this is where Jesus stopped and wept over Jerusalem on his journey to keep the Jewish Passover feast and ultimately be crucified. The film suggests that this tomb is part of a chain of ancient Christian tombs. An ossuary that appears to confirm this is from this tomb and is thought to be the ossuary of Simon Barjona, also known as the Apostle Peter. However, not everyone believes that this ossuary really belongs to the famous apostle. Dr. Emil Puesh has been studying ancient writing for 40 years and is one of the world's leading experts in epigraphy. Here is a very important inscription on an ossuary. Yeah, Dominus Flevit. From Dominus Flevit. I know. Okay, this has been translated by, by everybody as, in English, Simon Barjona. What I, what I can read here the best is Shimeon Bar mm -hmm. Zila. Zila? Zila or, uh, no, Zila or Zoila. Yeah. Because we know it's sign Yud, probably, because it's very short. This is Lamed, and this is uh, an Aleph. He tells us that this is not the ossuary of Simon Peter, but of someone named Simon Bar Zila. Simon, son of Zila. Although this is not the ossuary of Peter, it did come from the tomb at Dominus Flevit, where an ancient engraving appears on an ossuary that resembles the facade above the Talpia tomb. Could this engraving be an early Christian symbol? And does this prove further that the Talpia tomb is the tomb of Jesus? The Talpia tomb was discovered in 1980. Shimon Gibson was a young archaeologist who was sent to help excavate and document this tomb when he noticed the strange symbols above the door. When I first approached the tomb, I noticed these decorations above the entrance. Now, you've got to remember that I was a, a young student of archaeology at that, at that time, uh, just barely sort of out of my, my teens. And so it was all new and very interesting and uh, very mysterious at the time. The chevron and circle that adorn this fascinating tomb have recently been linked to an ossuary found in a tomb at Dominus Flevit. This ossuary has an engraving that appears to match the facade at the tomb in Talpiot and is thought by some to be an early Christian symbol. The film The Lost Tomb of Jesus first made this connection as they investigated the idea that the Talpiot tomb could be the tomb of Jesus and his family. Dr. Stephen Fawn brought us to the Dominus Flevit tomb to show us this very ossuary and explain something that he noticed from the Lost Tomb film. After we saw the film, we came in and just said, you know, it's amazing that there's an actual chevron on the side of one of these ossuaries. Mm -hmm. And so when we came in, we looked for this ossuary without the, the lid on it and with the symbol on the side. And the producer, who was with us at the time, pointed out, well, there it is up there. And when I looked up, he said, but there's a lid on it. And, oh, it doesn't have this mark on the lid. Well, you know, I would hope that if this was a stonemason's mark, that maybe it would be on the lid as well. Mm -hmm. And I looked, and I said, well, look on the other side and see if there's a symbol like that. And he says, yeah, sure enough, there it is. And I said, well, why don't you pick it up and turn it around? So you take the thing and very carefully, mm -hmm. Turn it around, like so. And voila, mm -hmm. it's exactly the same as the one above. Yeah. So at that point, we realized that this went from being a very important religious symbol to being simply a stonemason's mark like all the others that we've seen here. Mason marks were extremely common during the use of ossuaries. They simply demonstrate which way a lid is to be placed on the ossuary it has been made to fit. In fact, during our time at the IAA warehouse, we found many examples of mason marks on ossuaries. It becomes clear to us that the mason marks at Dominus Flevit are most likely not early Christian symbols at all. But what about the Talbiot tomb? 
Shimon Gibson explains that although he was mystified by the Talpia tomb's facade when he first saw it in his youth, since then he has noticed many other tombs with a similar motif. You have a kind of sort of repetition of certain motifs. One of them is the gable, so you have this kind of uh, chevron. Uh, sometimes they have, and if you look at the, the one in the, from the Talpia tomb, its upper part uh, it doesn't end in, in, a, in a point of the triangle, but actually curves around. And that is because it's supposed to represent, um, um, sometimes it's a, a, a burial urn or some kind of motif which is at the, the angles of the, the pediment or the gable. Taking a closer look at the original sketches of the Talpia tomb, we discover that its facade is different from the mark that was found at Dominus Flevit. We also learn that this motif was a common artistic design in the first century. With very little evidence left supporting the lost tomb of Jesus theory, we come full circle and decide to take a closer look at the inscriptions that started it all. The inscription that has been the catalyst for convincing some that the Talpia tomb is the family tomb of Jesus. The name which in this context seems to say that Jesus really did not rise from the dead. The name Yeshua bar Yosef, Jesus, son of Joseph. The most important ossuary in the, this collection of the, this Talpia tomb was an ossuary that, that reads, at least on the surface, Yeshua bar Yosef, Jesus, son of Joseph. However, this one is not so straightforward. The original report records the name Yeshua, followed by a question mark. It is far from certain that the ossuary says Yeshua or Jesus at all. Many people are reading this as Yeshua bar or ben Yosef, Jesus, son of Joseph. Again, as an epigrapher, is that really clear to you? Bar Joseph is clear. Maybe Yeshu. Maybe Yeshu, but no more than that. Whether it matters to me personally uh, if this tomb is or is not the tomb of Jesus, uh, I think I would say yes and no. I want the truth, so if it isn't the tomb of Jesus, I want to know it. And certainly would never want to argue something that has uh, been disproven. Based on everything we know, based on good scholarship, proper archaeology, study of the inscriptions, study of Jewish burial traditions, based on everything that credible, trained, recognized scholars know, I believe that the Talpia tomb is not the tomb of Jesus and his family. It is highly improbable that it was the tomb of Jesus and his family. There's a story to tell there. Uh, we can't, from this though, tell the story of Jesus of Nazareth and his family. With 2,000 years between us and the family who owned the tomb of Talpiot, little can be known for certain about them. If they were not the Holy Family, did they know Jesus of Nazareth? Did they brush shoulders with him at Jewish festivals? Or listen to any of his inspiring teachings? The true story about the family of Talpiot remains a mystery. The Talpia tomb is at the very least one more fascinating remnant of Jewish history, which continues to be unearthed in Israel's ancient soil.